Hey guys, what's up? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver and it's been two weeks since we inoculated our spores um, and we finally got some Piapinos starting to form. So there's maybe 10, 10 isolates of Piapino from the streak plate. Um, the other two plates are still, still clean, but I can definitely work with 10. Um, and then we've got, it looks like another black pearl. So I've got two, two separate isolates. That one's getting pretty big there. From the black pearl kings as well. So I'm gonna be introducing all of those as soon as they grow out. But I kind of wanted to go over some of the different morphologies. So this is all the different chestnut spores that um, the isolates grew out and you can see on this plate, there is definitely a diversity. Um, this one's kind of flatter and less cottony. And then these two up here are nice and bright white. Um, and then on some of the more dense plates, you can see a little contamination down here, but all the different types of chestnuts that are forming. I thought that was really cool. And then the even more dense colony um, you can see a little bacterial setting in but we got all the isolates before any of that got overgrown so it's super important to just pay attention um, to your plates every day and that way you'll get them when they're nice and small like these and um, I also have these chestnuts and the piapini that have fully colonized. So this is just a drinking glass and um, you can see that mycelium, it's been about four days fully colonized like this. So I'll show you guys how to fruit these um, jar cultures. So this is gonna be a multi-spore culture of mycelium and hopefully the strongest spores will outcompete each other. And then um, the mushrooms that you get um, from the chestnuts, um, we'll, we'll clone those mushrooms and then that will be a new phenotype. Um, All right, so I've just got some basic perlite here. Um, this is gonna be used to keep the humidity inside of our fruiting chamber, which is going to be this seedling dome um, you can get these at any hardware store for about five bucks it's just a plastic plastic lid and then i put some micropore tape over the holes and then it's got a pl uh, plastic bottom so i usually just spray them with some surfactant it's just a natural soap um, this is whip it but it doesn't really matter as long as you use some kind of soap to lift up any debris from the previous um, the previous run. And then I'll go ahead and just spray it down with some alcohol and let that all evaporate. And like I said, this perlite is going to be used to humidify the chamber so I'll just go ahead and fill the bottom with the perlite maybe about an inch or so on the bottom just so it covers the bottom completely. And then I usually use hydrogen peroxide to hydrate my perlite. Um, you could just get this at any drugstore. It's just 3% hydrogen peroxide and that way it's gonna kill any kind of organisms that are living on that perlite. Um, and then 
kind of want to moisten it. Um, and then this is just regular water. So I'll just top this off with water. So now I know my perlite is pretty moist, it feels heavy. Um, and that way when I add my cultures, um, I'm just gonna tip them upside down and let them fruit, they'll be in a moist environment. So I'll go ahead and start with this one. This is the Piapini from 212 spore culture. So you can see they're pretty easy to lift out of there. It's like making a sand castle. Um, here's another Piapini. It's easy as that. So hopefully we get some fruits out of here and then we can clone the tissue from those. And we'll have a brand new strain to work with. So these ones don't have the foil. So you can either just leave them on the lid, but I'm gonna be using these lids, so I'm just gonna put these directly onto the perlite. Okay guys, so I found a good spot that it's got some indirect sunlight right in the kitchen. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and mist the top of the inside of our lid and just do this once a day. Um, you just wanna keep the humidity up inside this fruiting chamber and in a couple weeks we should have a nice flush of multiple different phenotypes and then we can clone those mushrooms and run them on full substrate and that way we're gonna have some fresh new um, breeds for the springtime. So. All right guys, thanks for watching. Um, we're really excited to get some new phenotypes. Hopefully we get some tasty mushrooms for the spring. Give us a like if you like this video. Share our content if you think anyone else would find this useful. Um, check out our Etsy. We've got a bunch of cultures and some of our heresiums are for sale. So that's fresh fungi on Etsy. Um, check out our website for any more information. And I look forward to the next video. Um, much love.